does whatever a spider can. Spins a web any size, catches seeds just like flies. Look out, here comes the Spider-Man. Is he strong? Beware ye who travel to the hollow sunken. A dormant volcano lieth within, and monsters without. The dark, the warmth, the damp, all allies to the mistress of death, the shadow spider. Yet you will not see her, she will see you. Everywhere lies a trap. The walls, the floors, the ceilings, all lined with sticky tendrils, just desperate to reach out their binding grasp, hold you fast as you wait her merciless judgment. Her mandibles of impressive length, then of... of of impressive length you can't softly speak of impressive length without sounding like i'm reading a fan fiction okay look today then we talk about something truly uniquely terrifying meet nurse skiller Scylla, Scylla. so as far as i can tell no one on Earth actually knows how to pronounce this word because I've looked up the official this is how to pronounce things resources, many of them, and none of them agree, really. I've asked, I've asked you know, general hunters, what, 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 what do they favor, what do they say, and we have about 12 different answers there. So, look, I'm just going to say that the correct pronunciation of Nursilla is... Oh my god, who the hell cares? And with that sorted... Let's begin. Nursilla is a uh, Temnoceran. 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 Hey, now don't start that again. A class of monsters that is essentially the spiders, categorized by web spinning, silk producing, poison manda. But it's it's fucking spiders. It's the big ass spiders section. So. Nursilla is definitely the best, and technically the only one, it's so sad, and she is simply, ah, I, I won't lie, I really struggled with quite severe arachnophobia for the longest time, to the point where if I saw a spider in my bedroom, I would go and sleep in another room for a few nights. You never forget the look of someone's face who confusingly asks you why you're asleep on the sofa, and then you respond with, I saw a spider. Though, fortunately, since then, I have very much taken it upon myself to work on it, and I can go as far right as picking up a spider and putting it outside. And honestly, I've grown quite fond of nature's greatest little craftsman. Silk is easily in my top five substances produced inside an animal. Like, we're talking right next to milk. From using them as nets to building empires in white. It really is something to be appreciated. And look, occasionally you even get a cute spider. Hi, my name's Lucas. But no, Scylla is not that. When I first saw her in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, I had a little bit of a, oh no. Oh, but that quickly gave way to, oh, what a, oh, what a monster! Quite literally in a class of her own, she, well, is a fucking psychopath. So, primarily then, she hunts these guys. And it's not hard to see why. Like, she probably saw the flaily little moron chickens wandering about the place and had a kind of, I think the world would be a much better place without them in. I cannot disagree. Go fucking Anakin on their asses. I hate them. And the thing is, though, past just killing and eating and food yum yum, 
she has an extra little quirk when it comes to her prey in Gypsaros. See, she skins them. She fully flays them. She, let's just say, is a proud member of House Bolton. And what she does with this grisly trophy is wears it. She she wears it. It's like a like a little cape. She she drapes it on herself. And this is actually quite the ingenious ploy. It gives her firstly protection against well the elements, and indeed, the weaponry. The Gypsros skin is incredibly thick and rubbery, making it both shock absorbent and taking some serious getting through from a bladed implement. On top of that, then, the Gypsros hide is incredibly thunder resistant. Rubber, thunder, you know, that classic counter. And it's so effective, Nursilla regularly walk away from encounters with something as thunderous as as a Kirin. Also, yes, you can break her spikes and then her skin layer coat off, and then she just looks like a really exposed bald spider, and it's kind of amusing. Then, past that, the consumption of Gypseros actually lets the Nasilla absorb their poison potent abilities into herself, filling the purple crystalline structures on her back with the deadly venom, able to then deliver it via her mandibles. But before we get to those impressively lengthy things, uh, the crystals themselves can drip. Burning and eating away at the floor as she hangs above, waiting for an unlucky sod to walk underneath. Now, her body is segregated into just two sections, only four legs as well, each ending in a barbed hook-like sickle for gripping to ceilings and walls and really doing the spidery things, and she then can deliver a sleep injection with her stinger. Interestingly enough, though, it's only the young Nursilla that possess this sleeping ability as a measure to defend themselves from that which they cannot outright kill, they can at least render them unconscious and flee. So let's talk about that poisonous spike face. She has the ability to extend out in gruesome fashion a pair of mandibles that... <laughs> From her face, saliva and fluid flying, they are coated in the venom from her crystals, and then they snap like the most gnarly pair of scissors you have ever seen, bisecting opponents if possible, but leaving them grievously wounded and slowly dying of noxious poison, which is actually a specific debuff on Hunters above normal poison that absolutely tanks your health. But either way, Prey has mere moments to live after taking such a hit. After that, then, she leaves little globs of webs also from her tail hole? I didn't want to say stinger again, and ended up with tail hole. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that- I'm, I don't mind talking about Nursilla's tail hole, right? It's, it's an impressive tail hole. Get some help. And these form, well, if you walk in them, you get wrapped up and then she will slowly pull you in range and you are at her mercy, unable to move but an inch, wriggling as you feel her mandibles start to chow down while you are still yet drawing breath. Her many eyes glowing in the gloom, a blue, eerie, ghostly visage, one you do not want to see staring at you from a dark place. She is quite the efficient hunter. Skilled, quick, and deadly. She can full on Spider-Man by attaching a quick web shot to a high place nearby and come swinging at you. She's got various claws and swipes and 
body motions to try and barrel through you, she really will use everything that she can to make it happen. And she does prefer the ambush life though, in direct conflict, she's not the most fearsome of foes, at least to other monsters. But that said, she's no slouch, she's able to hang with the impressive might of the likes of Tigrex and Naga Cougar and not you. Never you. And even something like a Tetsukabra or a Kezu or a Celtus can find itself caught immobilized and set an appointment with the sweet oblivion of nothingness via getting a little bit too feisty around her webbed nests. They do construct their nests deliberately where traffic is high, hoping to snare as many prey as possible. It's not uncommon to find a grim graveyard that would make even a predator jealous. Hanging from the ceiling, encased without skin, and long since without hope. It's a sight that no one is ever quite the same after witnessing. <laughs> so that is about it for your base Nursilla. She's not the most in-depth fight as far as game mechanics, but her effect on the world is just magnificent. When you are really not an endgame monster by any stretch, not apex by any stretch, but still have this niche of utter, terrifying predator perfection, that you get entire webbed zones to sell just how, well, unfortunate you are to be hunted by one, that is pretty damn cool. Now there is a Nursilla subspecies, the Shrouded Nursilla, known as the Corpse Spider this time. She lives in more sandy, warmer climes such as the dunes, and her prey of favor is not the Gypsaros, but the Kezu. <laughs> See, isn't it nice when when a Kezu shuts the fuck up. Uh, look, I'll be honest, this again makes me think that Nursilla are just trying to do a PR job here. It's not their fault, right, that they look like giant lumbering nightmare fuels. And I think they've realized this and go on, we want better relations with the hunters. Maybe if we kill two of the most irritating monsters on lock, they will see us better. And I can't deny it's working! Like, if I got told, yeah, there's something just en masse removing Gypsaros and Kezu from the wild, I mean, I'd want to shake their fucking spindly leg at that point. I mean, I wouldn't actually, because I don't want to die, but I would at least yell thank you from far, far away. Nice one! This habit then, instead of poison, and instead of purple, we have paralysis yellow as the spikes and this ghostly white skin giving her quite the striking form. Past that, she's very similar to her counterparts. A little bit faster, a little bit stronger, you know how the subspecies go, but what I really love is that an Asilla changes her biology hunting habits depending on preferred main prey of choice. Now, they'll eat bloody anything that wanders in, but they actively will hunt their preferred food item. So, Gypsaros and Kezu. And this, to me then, to segue to world, means that you can place Nursilla in any given environment and she will adapt, identify a new, populous, easily attainable source of sustenance and make it their bitch. Now, you know, bad luck to whoever does get chosen, but this means you don't need to add Skezu, you don't need to add Gypsaros in order to add Nursilla. Now, obviously, it's very much a 
unique frame. But when we do get round to an eventual G ranky ish injection, the next proper big batch of content and monsters that isn't trickle updates, because surely one day it has to happen. Though I can't say I'd be against the world just kind of continuing. Like, imagine if every two ish months from now until, well, a while, we get a new monster. Over the next years and years, it doubles in roster size and just keeps going, and as time passes, we will of course start to see different skeletal archetypes and start to inject some real variety that don't need to follow an established, well, role, let's say, already implemented, because really it would be mental to think that we are never going to get something that isn't a Fanged Wyvern, or Flying Wyvern, or Piscine Wyvern, and you, you get the, you get the, uh, the, 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 the thoughts I'm transmitting here. So, the Rotten Veil, it was made for her. How can we not have the giant fuck off corpse spider in a zone quite literally carpeted with bodies. She goes around murdering monsters, ripping off their skin and wearing it. She would roll around in the rotten flesh like Scrooge McDuck in gold. Imagine the cobwebs, the zone slight subtle changes. Nope. Adding a little extra pocket that is this full on impressive yet ominous construction, web lining it all as you wander through and hope you don't trigger the wrong little vibration. Ah, oh, and her prey, of course, becomes Great Giros. We get the shrouded variety, the paralysis one, that's fine, I am a big advocate for it's okay if the only version of the monster we get is a subspecies. We don't need the base one, the base one in world can be a subspecies. So she wears wears Great Giros skin, gets the paralysis, is able to compete and fight and draw with Odogaron, the little maniac, and we just get some really nice variety and a fourth monster in the Rotten Vale, which I think it really needs. I honestly, this is an open and shut case. Nursilla is probably on my five monsters if I could choose any to get added to world, and I don't personally think she's even in my top 10. Well, maybe, it'd be close, but for the health of world, I think she is one of the prime choices, given how perfectly she'd fit down there. So, yeah, that. Oh, please make it happen. All right, guys, that is Nursilla, Skylar, Silla, whatever. Honestly, what? I don't, I don't, we're done. We're done, we're done now. The conversation is over. Like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe for more. Let me know who you'd like to lure up next, and I'll see you soon. A good boy. Rage gaming with the video float. But that's all that's really relevant at the mo, but I'm still gonna leave this up so you patrons know that I love you even though the outro's no longer that kinda relevant. But the new one's being worked on and it's gonna be a truly badass song, and don't worry, I won't be doing any rapping on it. I'm gonna go now. Uh, this was shit.